Hello everyone, in today's video we will be learning how you can create a one-click responsive preview feature for any website. If you are wondering what a one-click responsive preview feature is, then take a look here. So this is basically a website and with the help of this one-click responsive preview feature, you can preview or showcase any website's tablet view or mobile view. See how cool it looks? And in today's video, we will be exactly learning how to do that. This feature is so useful that almost all top websites use this, especially the ones who are selling ready-made template kits or if they're showcasing any website. For example, even if you are a person who is a freelancer, this is the type of feature that will win you a lot of projects. Since this kind of advanced feature makes you seem more reliable to the clients. By showcasing this kind of features in your portfolio, you'll definitely score some extra points. So without any further ado, let's get to our today's video. So first of all, open your Elementor Canvas. Then let's take a container, so click on this plus icon, then choose this flexbox layout. For direction, choose this row direction. Then let's rename our container as header container. Then from under its layout, let's do its settings. Scroll down, set the justify content to center. Then set align items to center as well. And for gaps, make them all zero pixels. There you go. Now go to the style tab. Here set the background type to classic. Then set the color. So choose this color picker, then drag this wheel to the complete top left to make it white. Then go back. Now go inside of this border drop down. Here set the border type to solid. Then for border width, unlink the values first and then only put the bottom border width to 1 pixels. Now for border color, choose this color picker and then let's make it almost transparent. So drag the second wheel to here. So it would make it almost transparent but not completely. Now go back, then go to the advanced tab. Here unlink the padding values. Then set the top padding to 20 pixels, right to 24 bottom to 20 and then left to 24. Now scroll down and set the Z index value as high as you want. So for example, I'm gonna type four nines. I'm giving it a very high Z index value so that this container will always show on top of any other element that we put down in this page. So with that, we're done with our header container. Let's click on this plus icon. Then drag another container in here. Make sure the content width is full width and then for its width value, let's make it 30%. Now go to the advanced tab. Here, unlink the padding values to make them all zero. Then for size, let's make it grow. Also, don't forget to rename this container. I'm gonna rename it as logo container. Now click on this plus icon, then drag this image widget in here. I'm gonna put an image here, so click on this choose image. And as you guys can see that currently we don't have any images here. So if you want to upload images, you can choose this upload files and select file from here. And if you also want to use the exact same resources that I will be using in this tutorial, then you can just go to the gymfaddigital.com I'll also put the link to this website down below in the description section. So from here, under important links, you'll see this link that says download the resources I've used in this tutorial. So I'm just going to click here and it will redirect me to these assets. You can just simply download them from here by clicking on this download button. See, it's downloaded. Now once it's downloaded, you can just unzip this folder and you'll get images, which will be stored in a folder that is just like this. Okay, so we're done downloading our assets. Let's just close this. Then go back to our Elementor canvas. Now from here, I'm just gonna select the files. So here it is, just go inside it and you can choose all this photo together and then click on open. Then all of them will be uploaded to your WordPress media library. Now from here, I'm just gonna choose this logo image and then click on select. Now don't worry, the image is still there. We just have to do some settings. So from here, let's go to the style tab. Here set the alignment to left. Give it a width value, change the percentage scale to pixel scale. Then in this field, write 124. Then scroll down, go inside of this CSS filters. Now simply just make the brightness zero, just like that. And there you go, we have our logo. And we don't need to change anything else here. Let's go back. Then simply just minimize this logo container and right click over it. Then click on add new container. So there will be a new container aligned with the logo container, but inside of our header container. Now let's rename this container as our responsive buttons container. Now from under its layout, make sure the content width is full width. Then for width value, we're going to change the percentage scale to custom, which is this pencil icon. Then in this field, I'm just going to write max width. So that's M-A-X, then a hyphen, and then W-I-D-T-H. There you go. Then we're going to set the direction to row, align items to center. Now go to the style tab. Here set the background type to classic. Then we're going to give it a color. So from here, let's drag the second wheel to the complete left to make it completely transparent. Let me move this structure a bit so you guys can see this. Okay, now go inside of this border drop down. Here set all the border radius to 8 pixels. Now go to the advanced tab. Here make all the padding values to 2 pixels. 
Now inside of it we're gonna add our buttons. So click on this plus icon, then drag this button widget in here. Oops, it went outside as you guys can see, but no need to panic. We can just simply drag it inside of this responsive buttons container. So drag this button in here. There you go. Now let's change the button text from here. So I'm gonna write here desktop. Then for icon, let's upload an SVG. So these are the SVGs that we have uploaded. Let's select from here. I'm going to choose this one. Click on insert media. Now set the icon position to start. And for icon spacing, make it 10 pixels. Now go to the style tab. Here go inside of typography, then set the font family to inter, that's I-N-T-E-R. Choose this one. Now for size value, let's make it 14 pixels. Leave weight as 500 and then for line height, we're gonna change it to 18 pixels. There you go. Now go back, then under this normal tab, let's give it a text color. So in this field, we're gonna write here 818498, then go back. Now set the background type to classic. Then let's choose a color for this one. So I'll choose this color picker, then make it completely transparent by dragging this wheel to the left. There you go. Then go back. Now move to the hover tab. Here give it a text color code in this field. So here I'm gonna write 36364A. Then go back. Make sure the background type is classic. Then for this color, we're gonna make it completely white. So drag this wheel here. Then go back. Now scroll down, then make all the border radius values 6 pixels. And for padding, I'll link the values first. Then set the top padding to 8 pixels, right to 16, bottom to 7, and then left to 16. Now go to the advanced tab. Now in order to set some cool effects, we're gonna set some CSS codes. But no need to worry, you guys won't have to do any coding. I've done it already. You'll just have to follow some simple steps. So first of all, what we're gonna do is click on this plus icon. Then in the search widget field, I'm gonna search for HTML. So this is the widget, just drag it in here. So this is the HTML widget, which is inside of this container but you don't need to do any settings for this container because this is only visible to us admins, people who are making the website. It's not visible to the rest of the world. However, I'm still gonna rename it just to avoid confusion. There you go. Now what we have to do is go back to gymfadigital.com. Then under important links, let's keep scrolling down and here you'll find this responsive button style CSS codes. I'm just gonna copy this whole portion by clicking here, copy to clipboard, then go back here. Now choose this HTML widget, then paste it here. Right click over here and click on paste. Then go back to Jimfad Digital again and keep scrolling down. Here you'll find this responsive button style CSS classes. From here, I'm just going to copy this button. It's written as BTN. So I'm just gonna copy this portion. Then go back here. And now what we're gonna do is choose this button that we just created. Now from under its advanced tab, scroll down, then put the CSS class name in this field. So right click here and click on paste. See how the effect has changed it? Now we have to make a tablet button and a mobile button, right? But no need to worry, we can just duplicate this one. So right click over here and click on duplicate. Then again right click over here and click on duplicate. There you go. Now we just have to change its contents. So first of all choose this one. Let's change this text to tablet. Then upload an icon from here. Choose this one and then click on insert media. Now choose this third button which is gonna be changed to mobile. So I'm gonna change this text to mobile. Then upload an icon. Just choose this mobile icon then click on insert media. We're done with this one as well. But now I want to make these buttons look even cooler. So what I'm going to do is go back to gymfadigital.com and here if you scroll down, you'll find this responsive button JS code or JavaScript code. So I'm just going to copy this whole portion, then go back to our Elementor canvas. Now here again, we'll choose this HTML widget inside of HTML container. And here let's scroll down to the bottom. Then after this style CSS, we're going to make some spaces by pressing enter on your keyboard. Now simply just right click over here and click on paste. So this was the CSS code and this is the JavaScript code, okay? Now in order to activate the effect, go back to gymfadigital.com. Here scroll down, then you'll find this button desktop ID. I'm just gonna copy this whole portion. Right click over it, click on copy, then go back here. Now choose this first button, which was the desktop button, okay? Then scroll down from under its advanced tab and in this CSS ID, I'm just gonna paste it. There you go. Now here I'm just gonna put the IDs first, then I will activate it later. So no need to worry, it will look even better. Then go back to Jimfad Digital again. Now copy this portion, which is button tablet. Right click over it, copy, so just copy, go back here, choose the second button, which is the tablet button, go to its advanced tab, scroll down, and paste it in this CSS ID. Now let's do the same for this last button. Go back to JFD, copy this portion, go back here, Advanced tab, scroll down, paste it in CSS ID. 
Now it's time for the final step. So let's go back to gymfaddigital.com. Here we're gonna scroll up and you guys notice this active writing. So I'm just gonna copy this portion, right click over it, click on copy, go back here. Now I'm just gonna paste this active CSS class name in this field. So you can make some space and then paste it here. There you go. Let me make it more visible. So if we click on this container, now you can see more clearly. For example, this is how these two are looking, but this is how this one is looking due to the active effect. So let's do the same for these two buttons. So let's choose this one from under the advanced tab, scroll down and after this CSS class button, just make a space and then right click and click on paste. Now for the last one, advanced tab, scroll down here, make space, paste it just like that. All right, so we're done with this responsive buttons container as well. Let's minimize these. Now right click over here and we're gonna make another container. So click on add new container and we're gonna rename this our call to action button container. So I just wrote CTAB for short. Now from under its layout, make sure container width is full width. Then for its width value, let's make it 30%. So in this field, write 30. Now make the align items to end, then go to its advanced tab. Here unlink the padding values to make them all zero, then set size to grow. Now inside of it, I'm gonna take a button. So click on this plus icon, then drag this button widget from here in here. Let's change the text. Then go to the style tab. Here go inside of typography, set the font family as inter, then set size to 14 pixels and give it a line height of 18 pixels. Now go back. Here under this normal tab, set the text color as 36364A. Then go back. Background type to classic. Then for this color, let's make it completely transparent just like this. Then go back. Now go to hover tab. Here set the text color to white, you already know how, then go back. Background type to classic and for this color, let's add a custom code which is 36364A, then go back. Now scroll down, here set all the border radius to 6 pixels, then for padding, unlink the padding values, make the top padding 8 pixels, right to 16, bottom to 8 and then left to 16. So this is how it's looking. Cool. All right, so we're done with this header container. Now let me just see if I want to make any other changes. Okay, so let me put a little bit more effect to this. So for that, let's go to responsive buttons container. Here, choose this color picker. Under the style tab, you'll find this color picker. Then we're gonna give it a color code of 1E3782. Now I'm just gonna simply drag this second wheel to the left like this to make it just like this so that it will get this subtle depth to this whole section and I also don't want to make all of them active so what I'm gonna do is go inside of this responsive buttons container choose this second button then scroll down I'm just gonna delete this active portion and then for the third one again scroll down and delete this active portion so now whenever we click on any one of these only that one will be active okay so with that we're done with this portion let's publish our work by clicking on this publish button Let's minimize this header container, this HTML container as well. And now comes the most fun part. And this is the part with which you can showcase any website and preview it in desktop mode, tablet mode, or mobile mode. So first of all, we're gonna click on this plus icon, then search for HTML widget, then drag this HTML widget in here. Let's rename this container as our iframe container. Now for this iframe container, we're gonna do some settings. So from under its layout, set the content width to full width, then go to the advanced tab. Here only the padding values to make them all zero. Now go inside of this iframe container, we have our HTML widget, let's just go to JFD, then from here if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll find this iframe HTML code. I'm just gonna copy this whole portion, then go here back, and let's paste it here. Right click over it, click on paste. Now nothing will show here, because we haven't really put down the URL of any website. To preview any website in this iframe area, you can just simply put the URL of that website in this hash. So after this source, we can put down the URL in this field and that website will be visible here. For example, if we go to kitpaba.com, you'll be able to see that in this website, they preview their ready-made template kits by showing off or giving a preview of that website. For example, if we go to the ready-made template kit for this website, then scroll down. Here, if you click on live demo, you'll be able to see that even they use this feature so that they can give a preview of the responsive modes of these top-notch websites to their website visitors. See, you can just click on any one of them and it will change the preview just like that. 
and we have done something similar as well right so now let's put that to use let's just click on this visit site option and here we can just copy this URL from here so I'm just gonna copy it then go back to our elementary canvas and in this field with the hashtag I'm just gonna paste it right here and just with that within a second as you guys can see that the exact website that we just saw is now being previewed with our one-click responsive preview feature cool right not only that you can switch the modes as well I'll give you guys a preview later for now let's just complete the settings here so we're almost done with all the settings here now we just need to do some responsive settings you can first publish your work up until now by clicking on this publish button then let's go to the tablet view from here here first of all go inside of this container choose this responsive buttons container go to its advanced tab scroll down then go inside of responsive here just hide on mobile portrait turn it on then choose this first button which is for desktop go to its advanced tab scroll down go inside of responsive then hide it on both tablet and mobile portrait now choose the second button which is for tab go to its advanced tab scroll down go inside of this responsive drop down then hide it on mobile portrait so the tablet view is done now let's move on to the mobile view here click on this header container go to its advanced tab make all the padding values 20 pixels then choose this logo container go to its layout set the content width to full width and for width value let's make it 50 percent change the pixel scale to percentage scale then in this field write 50 there you go now inside of it we'll find this image widget go to its style tab then from width let's give it a value of 100 pixels now finally we're all done with the responsive settings so let's move back to desktop view minimize all of this now just go inside of this iframe container then from under its advanced tab if you scroll down we have to put down one last CSS so go to JFD scroll down you'll find this iframe container class let's copy it then go back here then put it down right here in the CSS classes field there you go so with that we're all done let's publish our work close these tabs and now if you preview changes from here you'll see how beautiful it looks see so this is the preview of this whole website which we just created in the same manner you can give a preview of any website of your liking it could be your own portfolio or any of your own websites that you're trying to sell you can preview them just like this with a one-click responsive preview feature see it's even changing the modes so everyone can get a preview of your website or any website that you're trying to showcase cool oh by the way if building websites yourself feels overwhelming don't worry we also design websites for clients from landing pages to full business sites you can reach out to us through jimfadigital.com I'll leave the link in the description I hope this video was useful to you and if it was please leave a big thumbs up and also please comment down below the learning experience from this video and this was our one-click responsive preview feature for today's video and I'll see you in the next one until then bye bye